Hi, this is Elsa P. here to celebrate Pluto going direct in Sagittarius by telling a series of Pluto-themed stories, um, like the, uh, the one I just uh, wrote in my blog, The Soldier and the Crossdresser. Uh, you seem to like them. I like them. I have an endless supply of them, so why not? Uh, so anyway, The Soldier tells me his um, stories from Special Forces. I'm fascinated with them. I want details. I want to know every little thing. I'm enthralled. And... Uh, one time I asked him, you know, if you ever, when he's crawling through the jungle on his belly, do you ever run into anyone else, someone else, you know, crawling in the other direction on their belly, like that graphic I put on my blog from Mad Magazine, Spy vs. Spy. I said, you know, what do you do when that happens? Is there some kind of professional courtesy? Uh, do you stop and kill that person, I ask? And he said, there, uh, you know, there is a professional courtesy. And, you know, if you're not looking for him and he's not looking for you, then you just crawl on by like, you know, it never happened. You know, neither of you were either there. And I think that's, uh, you know, I was amused. And uh, I have uh, uh, a story of a similar happening. Uh, a while back, uh, I was going to meet the soldier, and we go to stupid places, just ridiculous. And where we ended up this time meeting is um, Beaver, Utah. Um, so I remember that there was a grand cross in the sky that day, and I had a long drive, and it was just chaos. And we were fighting on the phone, and, uh, you know, it was just like a big storm of energy. And uh, But I drove through the storm, and he drove through the storm, and I, and I got there first. So I checked in this motel. And they gave me a room on the first floor, and I was stifled. And I just, I'd been in the car all day, and I just needed to shake, shake out, you know, the energy off. So I went to open the window, and when I went to open the window, I saw that it didn't lock. So, so now what? You know, I'm going to be in this room, and I know for a fact that the soldier likes the idea of somebody coming through the window. You know, he, he have it thrill him. Like he wants to move to the border and just hope you invade this country because he likes to fight. And, you know, think what you want about that. I like to have sex. I don't care what you think. I still like to have sex. Or I like to daydream, you know. You know, we, you can't help your nature. So he's like, you know, any time you can fight, this is an opportunity for him. So, you know, and I'm obviously going to be safe if somebody comes through this window within there. However, you know, I don't like the idea. You know, I don't like to fight. So um, I went to the front desk and I, I told him, you know, this window doesn't lock and I don't feel safe. So the guy came in the room um, and uh, he didn't speak uh, so much English, just a language barrier. And he tried to pretend like he didn't understand that the window didn't lock. And I wasn't going to let him get away with that. And I was thinking, you know, this is another example of you never know when someone's doing you a favor. You know, it's like it, you really don't want somebody coming through this window tonight. So, you know, put me in a different room. Let's just not go begging. You know, not with the sky like it was. You know, chaos. So uh, the guy finally agreed, and he gave me another room, and I was on the second floor. So this happened all right when I first got in the room. So I didn't even have a suitcase in. And I went out of the car, got a suitcase, and I was coming to check in this room on the second floor, and I ran smack into these two men. And I looked, they were checking into the room across from mine. And, and I looked at them and I said, okay, you're not brothers and you're not gay, so just what the hell are you up to? And I knew they were up to something. I could feel them. And they could feel me too, like we saw each other, you know. And we didn't have to talk. We just, there was like everybody stopped in the hall. And I looked at them. Like, uh, you know, okay, yeah, I know you're up to something. Uh, yes, I am Bonnie. However, there is a Clyde, and there's two of you, and you guys are busy, so just focus on what you're doing, and never mind that you even saw me, because, uh, you know, there's a Clyde. And I, on that, without saying anything, I turned and went into the room. And I got into the room, and I shook it off, because I don't need this. I don't need to have it on my mind. So the soldier came. We had a great time. And uh, I never saw those guys, you know, they, I don't know what they were up to, but then we were leaving. So this is where we were like checking out with their bags and we ran smack into them, uh, checking out of their room. The four of us are stuck there in the hall. And these two men, they look at the soldier's tattoos, you know, and they start talking to him in code. <laughs> I just start laughing, you know. They recognize his tattoos. This means that. Next thing you know, you know, they're of the same ilk. It was no, you know, great surprise, but... Uh, you know, that's, that's, the, that's my story of spy meets spy meets spy meets spy. And, you know, uh, like the soldier didn't know. I, you know, on the way out, I said, yeah, 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 I already encountered those two. He says, oh, he's explaining to me, you know, what, the, what they were saying. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm aware of them. And he just looks at me and it's like, look at him. It's like, don't ask. So uh, that's my, that's my uh, story. I hope you liked it. This is Elsa P. at ElsaElsa.com.